Okay. Woohoo. So today we're working on tracking. See there, that's where I want my explosion, but it's all shaky. And I need to track it. So I'm actually gonna use Buju today. It's a really awesome program. I just have the trial version because I'm trying it out. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Fast. Setup, import sequence. Go through movies. Yeah, there. And change it to no adult pan because mine, I don't move at all. If it was a free move, it's when you're actually moving in 3D space. Free moves, they're a lot harder to work with. Because you have to like pick the right null to apply to. Hit OK. Camera, camera. This thing messes up your frame rate. Check your frame rate. 997. You want to make sure you have the right frame rate before you try to track it. Glitches all up. Um, I'm going to change this to varying just in case it is, which it probably isn't, but too bad. Go to feature tracking, and that all looks good. Start. Let's go and let's go. Whoa, that was fast. That was really fast. Okay, it tracked all of the things. Good. Go to camera solves. Check optimize camera path smoothness. It'll look a lot smoother. It's good. Start. Ooh. Okay. So it makes about a hundred track points for you. Okay, now make sure you're in test task view. Or else you won't see all this toolbox. Yeah, we didn't task you if you're not. Uh, it sucks for you. Export camera solve. Under export. Yeah, click on it. Um, hmm. Let's browse for a place. Change this to 1000. It's very important. It's not that important. It just makes the nulls a lot smaller because you don't want to have these huge nulls like a thousand of them. I'll make them so you can actually see them. Okay, select. Uh, whatever. I'll replace it. Um, <laughs> okay, now hit solve. I mean, save. And it'll load through it. Okay, let's go back to After Effects. Import what we just created. Blah. Takes a while to load. Okay, it's gonna be a new comp. So open up that new comp. See, there's about a million track points. So let's drag our original footage on top of there. Uh, it looks a little off. Hmm, it's weird. Something weird with this. Ugh. It's weird. Um, hmm. Maybe if we drag that over. Ah, yeah. It's one frame off. Sometimes happens. But, yeah. You can try that. Uh, now let's just import an explosion. Let's go to the explosion. Oh, I think I passed him. Nice. Very nice. There they are. Wow, I passed him again. Let's just get number two. Number two is cool. That's what I used. First one. Whoops. Sorry, computer. Sorry about that. Okay. So... Check it 3D. Make sure you check it 3D. I'm going to turn off all of the nulls. Wow. Okay. That'll save a lot of RAM space. Okay. So go to the explosion. 
Make sure it's 3D. Now, wait. Turn it way up until it's in frame, well, not in frame or whatever. And now, woohoo, it tracks to your scene. But that's not all we want to do. <clears throat> we want to have it explode at the right place. So let's find it, bring it down. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that line, I'll have to get rid of that. Go to the pen tool and mask around the bottom so you get a nice bottom. Uh, this is very quick. You could also do the car. Oh, hit M. Change it from add to subtract. Feather it a bunch. It's probably too much, but whatever. Um, change it to screen to make it blend better. Boom. Now, hmm, what else do we need? Uh, flows pretty well. You could always tweak it, add some more stuff, smoke, dirt hits, matters where you are. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Nah. Let's mask around the car. Uh, it's a very quick mask. Screw that little, um, what do you call it? Uh, rear view mirror. It's not important. It'll get exploded on top. Yeah, you, um, when you're normally masking, you want to be very detailed. Go through all the little things. Probably zoom in a bunch, just so you can see. You're going to hit M, change it to subtract. So, it doesn't have it. So you see, it covers up the rear view mirror, but that's okay, because it's a fire. Would make sense. Create a new solid. Um, let's make it orange. It's actually on a pretty good color. That's surprising. Doesn't usually happen. Okay, now we have an orange one. Um, change it to add. You can turn it off. Now let's draw a little thing under the explosion on where it would light up. Well, a small one. Because I mean on that frame it would light up a bunch, but... Okay, never mind. Make it 3D. Change where the position is. We can redo the mask later. Um, It's good how it is. You want it to be big. Let's turn it off. Select the circle tool. If you don't have the circle tool, just hold down on the square tool or whatever tool is there, and it will become a circle. Um, I use circle the most, so that's what's going to be there. But yeah, okay. So now you're going to unlink the two things and then feather the X way more than you feather the Y. So it looks like it's on a 3D space. Okay. Now, right there, it should be much bigger. So, right there, we'll hit the endpoint. We'll bring it in. And then. Right there, we need to keyframe. Keyframe the scale at the beginning. Go to the second one. And scale it way up. Yeah, there. That worked better. Just drag it over. Scale it back up. 
Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah. <coughs> Whoops. Okay, you also want to keep her in the position. keyframe at the last place we were. So we like the position there. Let's add a keyframe. Hit that little thing. Go to the beginning. And whoops. Ah, uh, this is really weird. No. You know what? I'll just adjust it like that. <coughs> yep. Manual. You can make it look like it's closer to the ground and farther away. All this other stuff. That's a very important step to get an explosion to look good. Um. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Doesn't look like a real explosion though. That's because we did it so fast. Yeah. Okay. Just keep frame there. Ooh. Looks good. So now we'll have it fade off. Of to when it fully gets big, we'll set a keyframe and to that the end of the explosion when it's high up. We'll set a keyframe. Make it fade off. Now, let's bring in a burn mark. Yeah, it looks good. No, you do not want a JPEG sequence. It's gonna be a JPEG sequence. Change it to not JPEG sequence. Okay, now we have that. Drag it on top. Doesn't really matter where it is. Because it's gonna be a 3D layer anyway. Um, that doesn't look that great. We don't want dark and we want multiply. <clears throat> there. It's the exact opposite of screen. It screens away the white until the black, the light parts of the black are going to be transparent. Now we'll hit the T, bring it down to zero. Well, no. Let's set another keyframe. And then go to the first one, bring that one down to zero. Now it fades in. Good. Okay, now we need to set it 3D. It's good. Position. Crank it way deep in Z space. You want it deeper than everything else, so I'm just doing 4,000. You want it to be behind everything. So you see, it's behind everything. That's good. That's what you want it to be. Because it's burnt marks. So yeah, 3D space, it is. I don't know, just do the other ones like 1,000, 2,000, and then 4,000. The added one should be... The added one doesn't really matter. Because it's added. So if it's on bottom of something, it'll still look like it's on bottom. But if it's on top, it'll still look like it's on bottom. That looks pretty good. You might want to make it a little bigger. Scale it out. Whoops. Um, yeah. It's pretty good. You could do a quick mask around the edges. looks good yeah mask like that and then let's feather it just a tad um normally you'd have like a big like flash when it explodes and that would cover up the damage coming on you could use an optical flare or something like that but yeah 